So 20 inch e-bikes aren't known for long range because they have the smaller wheels, right? But that's all changed now with this bike here from PVY. It's called the Libin and the Libin here has quite a few things that are different. So the big thing is the two batteries. So we have one right here in the frame, another in the seat post, Combined gives us 20 amp hours, which is very good. Now they say range, you can get up to 260 kilometers, which is phenomenal. And I find that a little hard to believe and I will be testing it out later in this video. Now it's got a torque sensor, rear hub motor, which is 250 watts. And that, if it is unlocked, can get us up to in well over 40 kilometers per hour. But right now I've got it locked down to 25 kilometers per hour and the 250 watts, but if you unlock it, it's then 500 watts. It's foldable, of course, and I'll show you how it folds and unfolds in this video here. And we have a belt drive, so this means no maintenance. You've got no chain to worry about having to oil it, to, that it could lay to rust or it's gonna wear out. These belt drives are good for around about 30,000 kilometers. It has a front shock and 160 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes. I'll show you how quick and easy it is now to fold up our ribbon here. You simply need to push forward the security, pull out the latch, then you can bend this part in half. Now you've got the kickstand, which is kind of in the way there, um, but I'll sort that out in just a minute here, in just a second. So that is, is it now folded in half. We've got that little wheel on the bottom that it can rest on, but we also want to drop down those handlebars. And to do so, you need to press in, release again the latch here, and then that will collapse to one side. The seat, I can drop that down a little bit lower if need be, and this makes the bike uh, very compact. And that's one of the reasons why people would go for a 20 inch foldable bike, is the smaller size that it folds down into. This means you can place it under a stair well, or in my case here, put the bike, lift it up, and put it into the boot of a car. And now I'm ready to go wherever I need in my car, with the bike here placed in, yes, it's a large estate, in the boot here, it does fit, and it should fit in a few other cars, but they'll have to be larger cars, of course. And then when you arrive to your destination, it's very quick and easy to get yourself up and running with the bike, so you need to pull it out, of course, and then you unfold it, so it's just like so. Clip the latch in with its security, and then the same thing for our front handlebars. Latch that in. And there we go, you are ready now to ride. It is that quick and easy. Now I wanted to run through a few other things with the bike. Our mud guards, these are made out of plastic. We have a metal frame that locks them into place. Now plastic is a good thing because they tend to transmit vibrations less. It will not corrode or rust or have the paint chipping off or anything like that. There is a magnet here is where the bike clips in when you fold it in half. Now the brakes, they are no brand brakes. They are hydraulic 160 millimeter disc brakes. The kickstand is sturdy, supports the weight of the bike, which is at 16 kilos, but it does feel to me like it could be a little bit more steady. It almost seems like it needs to come forward here a little more, but it just simply doesn't. So you have to be careful with that one that the bike doesn't fall over. PVY selected Wellgo for their pedals, and this is a lightweight model, which fits just trying to keep the weight of the bike down, and I like them. They're very sturdy, strong, and being a well-known brand, Wellgo, you know that they're gonna be quality and they won't break on us. We don't get a quick release with the front hub or the seat post, but that in a way is a good thing. It means no one can just go along and steal the seat or the front wheel. Front headlight does have a nice lens in the front of it. It is powerful, lights the path ahead of me just fine, and good to have this included. Can't see any branding on the seat. It's nice, it's got a synthetic leather on it, plenty of padding, it's nice and wide, so soft when you're riding along. And the seat post acts as our secondary battery that I talked about in the intro. Now you can choose to keep it on or off. There is a switch right here, so I can turn it on now and let the bike decide which battery to use. Now this is based off voltage. It will swap over when one battery is nearing the end of its charge, it'll swap over to the fresh battery. But if I decided to turn it off right here, then I can use the battery within the bike first, keep this one in reserve, then turn it on by simply pressing that button as long as it's plugged in then that will then power the bike. We do get two sets of keys. So we've got one here for our seat post, which is lockable. So you can lock that into place, means no one can go along there and just remove the seat, that expensive secondary battery. And then the internal battery is also locked into place. 
The batteries take about approximately five to six hours to charge and you've got a charging port here on the frame for the internal battery so you don't need to remove it to charge it. The other charge point is located just above the plug with our seat post battery. Now we do have a rear tail light so pressing that button that's just in front of it on the seat post there you can turn on the rear tail light. It's bright and you can see that without any issues at night so again good for safety. Just like our tires that do have sidewall reflectors. So these tires are 20 inches by two and a half inches wide with a directional tread pattern. So what is the brand of motor? Well, it is a Zion GDA motor. Haven't heard of them before, but so far it seems to be good and it's not a loud motor either. Up the front here, it uses a torque sensor, which gives us that power delivery pretty much straight away. So not speed sensor. You get the speed sensors on cheaper models. So great to see that PVY did go with a torque sensor. The frame welds have been ground down and the paint job is very good. It's this matte gray, I like it. And the mechanism here for the latch is very secure. So you have a little security that you need to pull forward first, pull on that latch. And the join here is flush. It feels very rigid and strong. You do not feel any flex in that fold while you're riding. And that gives great peace of mind. The front handlebar is height adjustable. You've got a quick release here. So you just simply need to pull that out and you can raise and drop the handlebar height. PVY selected lock grips. Now they're a cheap style one, but they don't move about, which is good. And the brake levers, have a good feel to them being hydraulic. On the left, you'll find the light on and off switch. Now you can always just leave that in, which is a good idea to keep the front light on, at least good for safety. Horn, which is loud, very loud buzzer. That's built into where the front headlight is. And our display, very clear. So you can see your odometer, your trip, average speed, battery gauge, and then your main speed and your pedal assist levels. So I've got this at three pedal assist levels, but you can configure it to have five if you want. And this is our application, which you can also use with the bike if you wanted to do so. So it's connected to it, as you can see. I need to go for a ride. I'm just starting out at the moment, so I've assembled the bike, but I wanted to show you the application here. So that's why I've got nothing for cycle time and average speed, max speed, seven kilometers per hour, that would just be me here pushing it around, but it'll give you all of those stats there. And you can see your battery life, odometer, and remotely turn the light on and off. This here go, this is tracking. Now for privacy reasons, I'm not gonna press this because that would show exactly where I live and everything like that, don't wanna do that. But it will track your rides for you and that's a good thing to have. And then under settings, you've got various different options in here. You can adjust the uh, pedal assist level through the application and set your speed unit there to kilometers per hour or miles per hour. And it's just a simple matter of getting the QR code on the screen, pairing it up with the application, then you have all of the info here. So that's our application. It's basic, but straightforward. And if you do happen to get it and buy the bike through their crowdfunding page and their campaign there, they will throw this in for free, which is a generic air tag. This is what it looks like. And it is using the Find My Tag application. So you can get that on iOS and Android. And it's a simple matter of just pairing it up to the application so you can track it via GPS, and then finding a place where to put our little air tag here on the bike. So find somewhere where it'll fit in, maybe inside the handlebars or something, and that way it's hidden, and you can track exactly where your e-bike is. And a perfect day here on the Mediterranean coast to be testing out the Libin. Ride test time is always the fun part, of course, of these videos. And that kickstand, I wish it was a little more forward. That's what I mentioned before. It just feels like that it should be angled a little bit more forward to be a bit more stable. So do be careful of that one, because last thing you want to do is put the bike down, rest it on the kickstand, and then have it fall over. So the wide seat is comfortable. You can raise it up nice and high to cater for most rider heights. Check their website for further details on that. And then, of course, we do have that torque sensor, uh, which really aids in just giving us that instant power delivery. So as soon as I start the pedal, you feel that power, and it depends on your input, the output you get from the motor with the torque sensor. So it is not like the speed sensors, which are simple on and off, and sometimes they can be very slow to cut out. So as soon as I stop pedaling, it stops giving me that assistance, which is good. Now you've got three pedal assist levels or up to five. You can configure it with the settings through the screen here and you can unlock it. At the moment, because of EU laws, I'm keeping it to 25 kilometers per hour. So that's the assistance. It's gonna give me up to that speed. And when I go over that, that's all on my own pedal power. And of course, being about drive, 
there are no gears with this, but it can handle a very small climb like that. I really barely even feel that in pedal assist level three, which is my maximum here because I have the three levels with it. So very smooth going along. I can hear a little bit of creaking coming from the front plastic mud guard, I think. I need to go along and just tighten that up. I think something's just a little loose there making that creak noise. But what I've noticed is the front shock, it does make a bit of noise, a bit of clanking. I wish it could be locked out. Now it is good to have a front shock for going up like little curbs and things, little bumps. It smooths that out, of course. It absorbs that impact. And we do have the two inch wide tires. It's a little bit wider some, uh, than some of the other bikes I have covered and the 20 inches, but it's just that clanking noise. Um, yeah, I really wish I could lock it out, but there's no adjustment as I showed you before with that. But a smooth, comfortable ride. Plenty of room in here. You can see that my knees are not gonna strike the handlebars. And I'll intentionally not lift up the front here and go up this little curb. See how the suspension handles that. Just fine, it's good. It makes the ride a bit more comfortable. It certainly is good having that suspension rather than having no shock at the front. Climb test now, PV wise claim is 20 to 30 degrees is the kind of climbs that the bike can handle with the 250 watt motor or unlocked at 500 watts. Now I've got it locked down to 250, pedal assist level number three, of course no gears, otherwise I would have it in the lowest gear. See how it handles this? This is the only time I really hear the motor a little. Just here, it's very quiet. And this climb, actually pretty good. This is a lot better than I thought it would be with the single speed. Doing here 16 kilometers per hour, which is pretty standard for this climb, being a little steep. And I'm putting in a probably about 50% effort. The bike is putting in the other 50. So this is good. Climbs a lot better than I expected. And my emergency braking test to see if I trigger those dogs. In fact, they're already barking. So from 30 kilometers per hour from the white post, full emergency brake. There we go. Okay, I did lock up the rear a little. Triggered the dogs, all four of them, and made it well before this post, putting it in a above average braking category. In fact, excellent for 20 inch sized wheels. And those 160 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes, they work well. They needed a little bit of bedding in. Even though they are no brand, I can safely stop without any issues at all. So good brakes with the Libin. Top speed of the bike, well, when you're pedaling along at 26, 27 kilometers per hour, and even downhill, you tend to overspeed yourself. So the gearing on it is geared up really for around about 26, 20, five kilometers per hour max. Going 32 like now, I've got to spin like crazy. My legs are going around and around at such RPM that it's not really sustainable. I mean, now I'm doing 27, 26 kilometers per hour and my legs are going like crazy. So definitely not geared for speeds above 27 kilometers per hour. Now for a test of the front shock so this is quite bumpy. This paving is all over the place, up and down, and it is smoothing it out a little, but you can hear that front shock making quite a bit of noise, clunking noise as it goes up and down. But at least we do have it. Then onto that range, which is outrageous. They claim that it can do 260 kilometers out of both of those batteries, both being 10 amp hours, 36 volt system, of course, that this does use, and using the lowest pedal assist level. It seems absolutely phenomenal, that kind of range, and I just don't see that being possible, at least not in my testing. So what I'm getting out of a single battery, and what I've calculated, is around 50 to 60 kilometers from one battery, which is typical for a 20-inch e-bike. The smaller the wheels, the, the worst kind of range you get normally for the battery capacity. However, that is times two with the two batteries. So you're looking at 100 to 120 for a 20-inch e-bike. That is phenomenal range to be able to get that. Now, the things that I've noticed with the bike is the build quality of the frame where the fold is, is very good. I've got a lot of confidence in that. It doesn't flex and neither does the handlebar here. I don't feel like it's an unsafe bike at all. I've been over some very rough ground here. I've gone 
gone down curbs and whatnot, and it's all been trouble free. You've not noticed any flex in the frame. And I like the paint job, this matte gray that they've gone with. You get the mud guards included, the headlights are good. Climbing performance is way better than you would expect out of a single belt driven e-bike you'd expect that okay without the gears that it's going to struggle on the climbs but it can handle 20 and 30 degree climbs the one that i did was 20 degrees and it went up that with ease really it was surprising just like the braking performance excellent it braked well before the post of my test putting it in a category that's well above average compared to other bikes and especially with the 20 inch size wheels normally their braking performance is a little worse off but no it was very good here so if you don't want to have that maintenance of having a chain belt, well, that's the belt drive for you. It's really good. However, top speed. What I could get it up to is around about 26, 27, 27, 28 kilometers per hour, and you're really pedaling your guts out. And you just tend to overspeed then, especially downhill. You can't add any more additional speed because your legs will be going like mad. So the ratio they have with this drive, with the belt drive here and the single speed, is not for high speed. It's for town, for city commuting, a to B. It's really the comfortable level I found was around about 25, 26 kilometers per hour for the speed there. Other than that, the bike's weight too being 16 kilos, very good. PYV have an excellent bike here with the Libon. It's just those two things I noticed and the, whoops, sorry, the second being the front shock, but it does make a bit of a rattling noise. I really wish that we could lock this out. Hopefully in future models, they will give us a front shock that is lockable so you could just lock that out if you didn't need it or want it it does add a little bit additional weight but of course then it adds to ride comfort so thank you so much for watching this video here on the pvy living